and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Sickens. I hope you're having a great day. So this is my first solo episode. I am going to a new format where one week I will be posting my interviews with amazing leaders. And then in the other weeks, I will be answering questions and talking about leadership uh, by myself. So I hope you enjoy and please share your feedback with me. I would love to know what you love, hate, or if you think I should just go back to interviewing people. All right, so I recently had a conversation with an amazing woman who was trying to figure out how to be a better CEO. We talked about all kinds of interesting things, and I think the most uh, relevant topic that we discussed is feedback and the importance of getting feedback from your direct reports and creating a safe place to do that. So I shared with her our process at Stone Age uh, where we have manager review forms. So every employee reviews his or her manager on the attributes that are in alignment with our values, which is um, be a great teammate, which is are you humble? Are you motivated? Are you a relationship builder? Are you a good communicator? And it gives really meaningful feedback on what's going well and what's not going well uh, for each of your individual employees. And I think it's such a great tool. And we used to do a, uh, a version of this uh, prior to last year, and we allowed for anonymous feedback. But part of our self-leadership mantra is keeping it real, and you can only keep it real when you are willing to speak up and 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 give feedback and say what you think. Of course, leaders have to create a safe place to do that, and it's not always easy. Uh, there are times when you screw up and you don't handle things the right way, which can erode trust. So it really does take a safe culture to be able to uh, elicit meaningful feedback from your employees, but if you can create that, it is so incredibly powerful. So I just wanted to give that tip. Don't be afraid to ask really direct feedback from your team. You will get such good insight into what's working and what's not. I'll just give you an example. Uh, I just did this with my team recently, and one of the things I've been really working on is cool, calm, and collected. So. I'm passionate and sometimes I can get amped up and sometimes it can come across as maybe I'm upset or um, or amped up about something and really I'm just passionate about it, but it leaves people feeling like, oh gosh. And so one of the pieces of feedback that I got was, you know, that I don't that I don't always make it safe. I just usually make it safe for people to speak their mind. And the example that my direct report gave me was awesome. So we were in a executive management team meeting and a candidate came up uh, as a topic of discussion and i said no um i really don't want that individual to uh to work for us there's things that i know uh from the community and uh this particular direct report thought that i was potentially shutting down my hr director and another one of the people on our executive management team but i knew differently i knew that my hr director knew the issues and i knew that this other person knew the issues and so uh i assumed it was all fine but none of the other piece people on the team understood that and so they were like oh gosh carrie just shut shut that down is it going to feel safe for them to bring things up that is so powerful because I knew those two members of my team understood what I was talking about, I made the assumption that everybody would. But those who didn't had a completely different read on the uh, conversation. And I was so grateful for that feedback because it's so easy to be in your own head and assume that what's in your head is in everybody else's and that's just not true. So that conversation wouldn't have happened without soliciting this feedback through a form that he filled out and sent to me and it was so useful and uh and really really helped me be more aware of that cool calm and collected and the words that i say have impact and not everybody understands the meaning behind them and so to be really thoughtful in how i handle things so anyway i hope that that tip helps all right the other thing that i wanted to talk about today is how to be a great manager 
I'm asked a lot of questions about management style and how to be a, become a better manager. How do you uh, start into your leadership journey as you are just figuring out how to go from individual contributor to a, uh, a new manager? And I think there are some universal ways that we can all be better managers, whether you're brand new or whether you are a seasoned manager. So I'd like to just share my thoughts on that today um, about what makes a great manager. So I've got six things that I'd like to cover. So the first one is connecting through regular one-on-one -on -one meetings. I have weekly tags with all of my direct reports and they are self-led. My team leads those, they bring the agenda and talk about the things that they wanna talk about. And then I add my topics at the end of the meeting. And this is such an important thing to do to build strong relationships. Most people really appreciate when their boss takes the time to get to know them better, especially when it comes to personal and career aspirations. And so these one-on-one -on -one meetings not only help you talk about priorities and work performance and allows you to address issues before they become issues, it allows you to give praise when you need to give praise, but you can also ask really great questions about professional development and you know how you can help them solve problems and how you can help them get where they need to be or where they want to be. So effective one-on-one -on -one meetings will always result in more effective relationships. So don't be afraid to have them, schedule them. They are the most important thing you can do as a manager. The second thing is to make sure that you have the right people on your team and them in the right seats on the bus. I know that's cliche, but it's true. It is not enough to just have raw talent on your team. Your employees have to be in the right roles, the roles that align with their skills and their talents and their passions. Great managers recognize that their employees will be their very best when they feel fulfilled at work and they feel like they're contributing and using their strengths on a day-to-day -day basis. So you need to take the time to gain these insights um, and help and under, really understand what makes your employees tick. You can tweak their roles to help them do what they do best every day and they will be happier, more productive, and more engaged in the work that they do. There are assessments that you can take, strength finders. Um, there are uh, assessments like the DISC profile. Uh, there are uh, all kinds of things out there that if you need help trying to understand how your team ticks that you can use so you don't have to work on it on your own. I can talk more about those in another show sometime. Third, uh, continuous improvement. Great managers are always looking to improve you have to be committed to improving. Great managers understand that they always have to be honing processes, teamwork, goal setting, working on cultural issues, trying to be better communicators, trying to be better at collaboration, that the quality of their work product really matters. So if you don't have a continuous improvement mindset, it's really tough to be a great manager. You can't just like hit the cruise control button not if you want to develop really, really great people. Four, good decision-making. Leaders who make good decisions and who empower their team to also make good decisions are the most highly regarded in most organizations. Good decision-making creates trust and it gives you credibility and it creates success. And your team might not always agree with your decisions. I certainly have made lots that my team doesn't agree with or maybe doesn't fully understand, but it's hard to argue when they turn out to be good ones. So I work hard to make good decisions. And if I make bad ones, I'm transparent about it, honest about it. Hey, this didn't work out the, like, the way I thought it was going to, and here's what we're going to do to fix it going forward. You can improve your decision-making skills by slowing down, by listening more, we have two ears and one mouth, as they say, and considering all possibilities. And when I say that you should consider all possibilities, that means that it's not just your idea uh, that's going to work. Uh, really get your team to engage in ideation and coming up with, I don't know, solutions to problems, and it might help you see things that you didn't see before. And that's great management. Ask questions. I'm a huge believer in asking questions. As you know, uh, you can check out uh, a blog post that I have on asking good questions. Just search for it on my website, carriesiggins.com. 
uh, and that will help you make better decisions. And remember that we all are filled with biases that cloud our judgment. So the more that we expose these biases, the better decisions that we will make. So make sure that you are getting well-rounded points of view to help you with decision-making. Fifth, rally your team around the bigger picture by tying it to the daily picture. Everybody wants to understand how they fit into the puzzle. And you never want your team to look at their jobs as, well, just a job or AKA just a paycheck. And it's hard to do that if you don't feel like you're part of the vision, you're part of executing the strategy for making the company really successful. So great, mo great managers understand that we all want to be part of something greater than ourselves. And they know how to tap into that motivation by ensuring that we have line of sight to our strategy, into what makes the company tick, how you execute that strategy, and that you really understand the vision for the future. The key to tying strategy to the work a person does every day is well thought out and communicated departmental plans, KPIs, and work prioritization. They all need to tie to strategic initiatives within the organization so everyone sees that they're part of that bigger picture. Be transparent, talk about and get feedback on the vision and strategy, engage them more than just the usual suspects in the organization as you're developing vision and goals and celebrate the big and small wins as often as possible. The more connected your team is to the bigger picture, the greater your chance for success. And finally, my sixth tip is be radically candid. I save this one for last because I think it's the most important. If you have to pick on one of the things to work on, improving how you give feedback should be at the top of the list. Great managers are candid and they address performance issues directly and timely and with compassion. Being radically candid, which is uh, a idea fleshed out by Kim Scott in her book, Radically Candid, How to Be a Kick-Ass Boss, which I love, we do training around it, really talks about caring enough to give direct feedback. Read the book if you wanna know more. I look at it as a way to show that you care because you're being honest, compassionate, but holding your team accountable to high standards. You never should take the easy way off by putting off the tough conversations, sugarcoating bad news or tough feedback or letting your desire to be liked, which, you know, we all have, especially me, uh, get in the way. You will understand that every person on your team deserves to know how they were, are, are performing. Great managers understand that every person on their team deserves to know how they are performing, what they need to do to improve, and how they are perceived in the organization. That is what helps employees be successful. Sugarcoating feedback or not giving it does not help your team be successful. And I will tell you this, if your team is not successful, it's really hard to be a successful manager. So be candid. You cannot be a great manager unless you're giving regular candid feedback. Repeat this mantra over and over again. If you want to be better giving feedback, be radically candid. And again, check out that book, Radical Candor, Be a Kick-Ass Boss Without Losing Your Humanity by Kim Scott. It is a game changer. So mastering all six points will not only help you become a better manager, but more importantly, will help you develop good employees into great employees. And that's the legacy all rock star managers should want to leave behind. As leaders, we need to develop great teams. We can't be great leaders. We can't have great companies without great teams. All right, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed that and learned some useful tips on how to be a better leader and how to be a better manager. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, please rate. Uh, the higher the ratings and the more subscriptions, the higher up the ranking I move, which means that more people will see this podcast. So if you find it helpful and you think other leaders could too, please uh, spread the word and I will appreciate it so much. I look forward to hosting you on the next episode. If you have questions, please send them to me and have a wonderful day.